Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We're at about 9.15 in the morning and we are on day 15 of our challenge. Um, yeah, I'm curious how it's going for you. What are the things that are coming up for you? Or you might be just flying by with no noticeable changes. Maybe you're cruising right along. Um, ah. So day 15 is um, in numerology is number six, one and five is six. And six is about uh, balance and family and relationships. And um, I don't know about family and relationship, but I do feel that number six is all about balance. Even if you look at how number six looks, it's round at the bottom with a little neck sticking out. So imagine that you're balancing, kind of like rocking on a little yo-yo pony looking thing, and you're just rocking back and forth, balancing on that rounded bottom. And in this, in this practice, it's going to work differently for everyone. And I'm not saying that I have accomplished anything through it. I'm just like you, just curious um, what this practice might yield. Um, and just like you, my mind questions, is it working? Is it doing what it's supposed to do? Um, and it's really easy to get on the wagon of the ego strain in beginning to doubt its um, potency. It's very easy to declare that this might be a waste of time. And that it's like, there's better things to do. Um, but I'm the type that once I've committed to something, I really do my best to try to stick it out to see to the end. Because only then I could decide. Do I continue? Did I have a few moments that were, uh, you know, profound in some way? Did I gain some insight? Uh, did I get to know myself a little better through this practice? Um, and if I arrive at day 40, and nothing significant that my mind has the capacity to understand or notice, um, then I could let that practice go and trust that perhaps the seeds have been planted and it will blossom at some other point. What the trick for me is that I always kind of psych my mind that even if it doesn't see it, even if it doesn't feel it, even if it, there's nothing to grab onto so tangible in this practice, where's my intuition? How come it's not, you know, I'm not speaking to my spirit. I'm not speaking to my higher self. I still don't have that connection. Whatever the story is, even if I don't have that, I'm still here because deep down, I listen to the voice of my heart and the message that I send to my brain is I may not see it, I may not feel it, but I know it's doing something. I know it's doing something because showing up every day, showing the commitment and doing and sitting and breathing and doing your best and holding the mutra, that has got to be something behind that. There's just got to be. Nothing of this practice is blank and a waste. Nothing. And in that belief, I am deeply rooted. In that belief, I am deeply rooted. I know that no matter how unseen or unfelt things are, 
I know this practice is doing something. And that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me coming back day in and day out to this practice to do this work. Because where would the chiseling process be if we show up on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and then all of a sudden we got hit with big kundalini awakening and we're all of a sudden are one with the universe and cosmos what can we then ground it can we really appreciate it so to me it's again coming back to the journey rather than arriving at a destination and i know that even when i arrive at the destination at the 40 days if there is still something that I'm like, oh, I don't know this meditation, I did this practice for intuition, I don't know if anything happened. Why? What if something blossoms a year from now? I don't know. I don't know. How quickly are you able to manifest your your desires and dreams? You know, I, I could go back to 2012 when my children were very little. And the closest Chuck E. Cheese, you know, like the kids' playground things that they love, was 40 minutes away. And certainly somewhere subconsciously, I wished, I wish there was a Chuck E. Cheese closer to us. And lo and behold, five years later, there is a Chuck E. Cheese closer to us. Unfortunately, we are not into that anymore, not into the food, not into that type of children's play my kids are grown but it took five years to manifest it right so as I'm doing this practice you know I don't know when I'm going to reap the benefits of it I don't know but I am always hopeful and faithful that it is going to do its work when it is time for me to reap the benefits I will I have no doubt in my mind that this is doing something so I'm just inviting you to also assess your own beliefs uh, in where you stand on this. And a lot of times we say, I think, I think, I think. And the minute we say, I think, we're plugging it into the brain, the logic, the rational, the ego. Going to, I feel. I feel that this is doing its work. I feel that there is something to be said about showing up and showing and following through with the commitment. I feel that I am definitely planting some seeds. I feel that these seeds will sprout in due time. Feel. Feel with your heart. Feel with your body. Okay. That's all I wanted to share with you. Uh, the beautiful thing about this practice is that it's householder's practice. You know, my children started school again after winter break and the schedule is new. So we had to shift some things and it was really sweet to be sleeping in late and not getting up early for sadhana. I was doing my practice at noon or at four o'clock and that's okay. That was fine. Now, seeing how my mornings are really busy, I had to make a wish for a new moon to give myself a chance to get up early to do my practice so that I'm not uh, bound by time on my schedule. So before my day even begins with driving my child to school, I wanna make sure my practice was done and checked off my list. I wanna make sure that I have that moment to myself to set my mindset, my energy for the day first thing in the morning. And it's very tempting to stay in bed, to be warm and cozy. There, There is that voice that says, ah, you could do it later in the day. You could do it later in the day. You could postpone it. But no. The less energy I give to that voice, the stronger my commitment, my habit becomes. So let's tune in with Adi Mantra and we'll begin our practice. We're still staying at eight minutes for today, but probably tomorrow we'll increase the time. Rubbing the hands firmly, bringing the palms together in front of the heart center. Begin to observe your breath. 
You may close the eyes gently down. Elevate yourself through lifting of the spine. Let's synchronize our breath by taking a deep inhale together. And exhale. Inhale one more time, suspending the breath at the top. Our gaze is gently dwelling in the third eye space. And exhale. Tuning in with Adi Mantra, let's inhale to begin. Om. Suspend the breath. As you humbly bow before your own inner wisdom and before the wisdom of all the cosmic intelligence. And exhale. All right. So a recap. Mudra is... Interlace the fingers, thumbs are crossed, index fingers are extended, positioning the mudra right below the tip of the nose. So when you lower the eyelids down, the eyes are not fully closed, they're just lowered down. You're gazing at the tips of your index finger. The breath is segmented, four strokes inhale through the O-shaped mouth. And one stroke exhale through the nose. Make sure you're relaxing your abdominal muscles. I haven't said that in a while, so just a refresher. And when you're exhaling, pull the navel in, push all the breath out. Try to segment the breath, a full breath, and equal four strokes. Let's take a deep inhale. Exhale, push the chin slightly back. And let's begin. Inhaling, mentally chanting, sa, da, na, ma, and then full exhale.
deeply inhale as you stretch the arms out to the side palms facing up Exhale, again, stretch vertically and horizontally. Pull up the root lock, expand your auric field. Now spread the fingers wide, make them tight like steel, and again tighten the entire body and envision your aura space, um, space extending. your hands on your knees allow the breath to flow organically feeling into your body Ready, take a deep inhale. Exhale. And gently open your eyes. Wow. Okay. Can you just ask yourself what it would feel like? We're doing it for eight minutes. What would it feel like to do it for 16 minutes, which is the allowed? time maximum time ask yourself do you feel like you could do it do you feel like there's richness behind it anyway moving on hopefully you're already remembering all the cues and the techniques behind this when we stretch imagining your auric field expanding your aura expa expands about three or four feet uh, when you wear white you making it even bigger when you're practicing mindfulness meditation yoga breath of fire um, you are technically expanding your auric field so when we meditate at the end of this particular practice i invite you to just envision that your energy field all it is is just the energy field expanding um somewhere in uh, textbooks i read that our field could expand to nine feet in a healthy individual um and in some yogic tradition the the healers the saints and the sages had their aura up to 25 feet so just imagine you walk in the room and your presence is felt I would imagine Dalai Lama, somebody who's of that statue, um, his energy radiates in the room that he occupies. So no matter how big the auditorium is, I'm sure people on the hundredth row still feel his presence. Uh, that's just my assumption. I don't know that for a fact, but it feels to me that a being of that um love that energy of compassion that loving kindness would have their aura so big extending out into into the surrounding and the world okay the next meditation again when i said feel and trust that it's working as a meditation of self-blessing so whether you are 
getting your intuitive insights or not, you know, that's besides the point. You are sitting here for eight minutes blessing yourself. Isn't there a beauty? Isn't there healing in, in just that posture? And that's kind of what I tend to think. When the arms get tired and the shoulders begin to uh, emit this sensation of discomfort, you know, whatever it might be for you, it could be tingly, it could be a little sting, a little burning sensation. Just remind yourself, this is a healing. You are under the dome of healing. And to me, that's kind of like where I reset myself. I cannot wait, honestly, till we get to do this meditation for 11 minutes. We're only three minutes away from meeting our target. So just hang in there. Make sure you're pulling your shoulder blades down. Press them down. Resist, um, resist having your shoulders rise up. And, I, and you might get a little bit of tension off that heat sensation off okay we're going to take a few deep breaths to set ourselves in inhale exhale just a refresher this meditation is inhaling eight quick strokes through the nose eight quick strokes exhale through the nose and then suspending the breath for 16 counts two strokes in one second And in suspending the breath, where your diaphragm is not moving, you're not leaking any breath out, and you're not inhaling. Mentally reciting the mantra, Sat Ta Na Ma, Sat Ta Na Ma, just a refresher. Why do we recite the mantra? Is to keep the mind focused. We want the current of the mind be on the mantra rather than the concurrent thoughts. And when you're a practitioner, who's been doing meditation for a while, I know for myself, I could be mentally chanting the mantra and I still have the thoughts. That's how quickly the ego, the mind trains. It's so quickly how it catches on. It's like, oh yeah, I could multitask. I could mentally recite the mantra and still think about, you know, yard work or whatever. So again, bring your attention to actually listening to your inside voice on the mantra. Listen to every syllable that you're saying mentally. Pay attention to the breath, the rhythm of, rhythm of the breath. So kind of like training the mind to stay focused on the things that you wanted it to be focused on, not what it pleases to focus on, okay? So here we go, deep inhale, coming into the posture exhale set the shoulder blades down make sure you're not leaning forward kind of tuck the chin back and begin
deep inhale stretch your arms up pull the palms towards the ceiling lean slightly back tilt your head gently exhale inhale again lift up the root log stretch up and back Exhale, one last time. Tighten up all the muscles in the back, legs, shoulders. Just noticing what you feel. When you're ready, gently float your arms into prayer mudra. Let's take a deep inhale, the breath of gratitude for showing up. Seeing the practice with Satnam, inhale. So Satnam, thank you so much for joining me today. I'd like to know where you're tuning in from. So in your comments, just indicate where you are, city, country. And I'll be seeing you tomorrow. And tomorrow, let's postpone the time to about 9.15, 9.30, um, since my schedule is kind of sliding to a little bit later. So let's do that at nine between 9.15 and 9.30. I'll try to be punctual. Satnam, many blessings, and I will see you tomorrow.